Okay, when approaching a limit problem such as this, uh, what do you, want? you want to start with the easiest possible strategy, which is direct substitution. So by substituting 2 into your rational expression here, you get 2 squared, which is 4, plus 2, which is 6, minus 6, which would give me 0, over 2 squared minus 4, which would again be 0. And so what we have here is what's called the indeterminate form. This is the situation where you need to do something else, something else to determine uh, if there's a limit, because in this situation, 0 over 0, you may have a limit and you may not. And so in our case, what's really the problem is basically the uh, zero in the denominator. And so your goal really is to somehow transform this denominator into something which no longer would have the factor that's giving you trouble. And in this case, since we're plugging 2 in, the factor that gives us trouble is x minus 2. So if I could get rid of that x minus 2 factor, then when I plug in 2, I would no longer get a 0 in the denominator, which we know is bad, 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 right? So really what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor. And so i got my limit as x approaches 2. And until I actually take the limit, I need to continue to write that. And so I'm going to factor the top, and that's a trinomial that will factor relatively easily into x plus 3, x minus 2. And the denominator becomes x plus 2, x minus 2. And we can see now that we have a common factor in the numerator and denominator. And so I can uh, divide those out. So we'll divide out my x minus 2s. And that leaves me now with the problem, the limit as x approaches 2 of x plus 3 over x plus 2. Now, we need to talk a little bit more about what we just did in the previous step because we've actually changed the problem. Uh, the expression x plus 3 over x plus 2 is not equivalent to what I started with, x squared plus x minus 6 over x squared minus 4. But it turns out that this new expression is equivalent at every point except when x is 2. And that is because there was a hole there in the original function, which no longer is in my new function. But what we know about limits is that the limit of a function as you approach a specific value does not depend on what happens at that value specifically. So it's only when you're uh, um, very, very close on either side. And so therefore, we can actually uh, get rid of our hole and basically just look at our new function here and solve this problem, and it will have the exact same limit as our original problem. And so now you might say, well, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is that now you have a, an expression that you can use direct substitution on. Now when I put 2 in, 2 in my numerator becomes 2 plus 3, which is 5, over in my denominator, 2 plus 2, which is 4. And it turns out that is my limit. And notice I'm not writing the word limit uh, as x approaches 2 anymore because the actual step of actually substituting in the 2, that's actually the step where I'm taking the limit. So that's about it.